Um, personally, I'm interested in um, cognitive sciences, so I'm interested in how the brain kind of takes information from uh, our visual world and uh, constructs a visual experience and a conscious experience, and then we can uh, that we can then use to kind of go and behave on or go and act on. We have obviously like a large pool of uh, undergrad participants that we kind of use to um, do some basic research on. Um, I, I like to set people up in kind of experimental situations that uh, the kinds of it kind of tests how much information the mind can kind of uh, process at once. So we kind of flash a bunch of images at them and we see, you know, how many were you able to pick out? Were you able to pick out one or maybe were you pick out, able to pick out all three? And if um, a lot of times we find that you, know, you can only grab the one. So we, we, we're kind of dealing with limitations. And so what we try to do is kind of take make experimental setups to push push the brain to its limitations. And we see how far those limitations are. Uh, I use EEG, which is electroencephalography. Um, we look at the, the uh, electrical activity um, that's produced in the brain, but we measure it at the level of the scalp. So there's also a lot, a lot of electrical activity that's coming in, um, like from the, the muscles in the face and stuff. Um, so we really try to kind of purify what's from the brain. And by, uh, to do that, we kind of take um, we take like hundreds of trials, like 400 trials over, uh, kind of seen the same thing 400 times. And we just make sure that uh, there's a consistency there. And even if you're moving your face or moving your eyes, what, whatever's consistent, we can be relatively sure that's coming from your brain and not from, you know, the muscles in your face or whatever. And what I particularly do is called, um, it's called event-related potentials. Uh, we measure... We measure uh, brain activity um, specifically following um, a certain like stimulus. So we'll show a number or something, and um, we kind of look for a specific spike in brain activity. And uh, if we can get that spike over you know 400 trials again and again, then we're reasonably sure that something is happening. Say it's about 200 milliseconds after this, something important is happening about 200 milliseconds after you see like a letter, and it's something cognitive. It's something probably helping you encode that letter into you know either memory or into processing, so you can uh, go on and, and use it later. So you you know you saw an N, and so you can continue to form the word no when you see it. Right now I'm studying, um, kind of like I said, these, these limits in um, what, what, what information can kind of reach conscious awareness. And um, what I'm kind of finding is that the more information you have packed together in little kind of temporal packets or like um, kind of episodes, the better you are at encoding that, as opposed to if it's spread out evenly over time. So if you have like a, a series of letters and numbers, and you, um, your job is to just remember all the letters. And there's going to be numbers in there too. Don't worry about those. Just remember the letters. You're going to remember more letters if it goes you know, A, B, C, D, and then the numbers, as opposed to if it goes like 1A, 2B, 3C. You're going to remember more letters when they're chunked together. And so essentially what I'm trying to find is um, there's actually a caveat of this, um, which is when you, when you have these uh, targets kind of chunked together, a lot of times you, you mix up their order. Um, you think a lot of people think you know the second one came first, the first one came last, and so there's this there's this loss of of information. Um, and basically, I'm trying to find where that goes, where this information. I mean, it strikes your retina in a very specific order because it occurs in that order, but somewhere along the line, the mind kind of makes an error or um, it kind of misattributes the order to another piece of information. So it's like, well, the O occurred before the N, so instead of no, it says on, and um, you know, that's actually a common error, I think, when people that people encounter all the time, uh, they just don't have the, the tools to recognize it all the time.